Okay, does gentle parenting simply mean letting your kid do whatever they want? A writer for The Cut argues that moms and dads who use this soft approach just turn into stressed and indulgent parents. So what do we think about this? Oh, you know, we chatted a few days ago on the show about, you know, how we're raising our kids differently than we were raised. And, and the pendulum has definitely swung. I think there was a generation that I was raised with and there was harsh consequences. Usually they started like this um, yeah. if, if things went wrong. And so we're not doing that anymore, thank goodness. But has the pen pendulum swung the other? other way into mm. gentle parenting where there are now no consequences. Yeah. I have seen that. Too and I'm definitely yeah. guilty of that myself. The challenge here is I do think that the pendulum swinging too far is a problem, but I do think we're in the right direction. And I say that having a daughter who is, she's a real deep empath. She shares a lot. Um, the kids are just balls of feelings. And I do like that she and I are able to sit down. We go through things. If she has a tantrum, which she doesn't really have a lot of, you know, you didn't get to have tantrums when you were little without a very swift consequence, but my daughter now, I sit down and I'm like, okay, what's going on? What's really going on? Mm -hmm. And my parents are probably like this, oh, that question. Right. What's <laughs> really going on? Who cares? Yeah. But I will say this, I will definitely continue to work on having better consequences for my daughter. The problem I have with this is gentle parenting is great in your house. Is that preparing your child for a world outside of the house no. that does not Precisely. accept gentle exactly. parenting Precisely. because they still have sort of the I, old school expectations of like, this is this or and that is that. Your ability I, yeah. to listen to an adult when I, they speak to you. I think if you talk to any educator who's been in the game for yeah. more than a minute, they'd agree that something is happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, there is a definite change. What that change is, I don't think there, there is a, a decision that everyone mm -hmm. agrees with to what you were saying. But I will say, like, as a kid, I don't remember kids acting out. I don't remember in, in, in school or in public places. It yep. just didn't feel mm -hmm. like it was an option. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it wasn't even in my brain, like, I'm going to be bad. It's just like, you just weren't bad. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, this is an anecdote, but through when I go grocery shopping, speaking of options, mm -hmm. sometimes <laughs> I'll see a parent and they'll ask a kid that maybe can speak two or three words. Mm -hmm. I see it a lot. What do you want for dinner tonight? <laughs> and, you know, or what do you want to wear today? What do you want? Like, here's, you know, that I didn't get those options. It was like, here is what you are having for dinner tonight. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if the world of options is overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, listen, absolutely. You know what? I, I was raised in a time where, you know, you got spankings, and I'm okay with it. I'm actually kind of grateful. And I can count on one hand the number of times I got a spanking. It was not, my parents were not aggressive. I actually really appreciate it now as an adult because when I go places, I've always been able to know how to behave, who to listen to, to respect authority. But what I'm noticing, I understand, but I also understand parents wanting to do better than their what their mm -hmm. parents did. Yeah. That is fair yeah. to say. But I think parents have to be listening to the camp counselors and the coaches and the teachers who are like, listen, we're in a crisis here. We cannot deal with your kids. Never mind teaching them something. We we can't even get them to listen to us or to stand in one spot without giving all this attitude. And then when we come to you, it's double down. Mm. So now you're not even listening. You're also supporting your child. So you, our hands are tied here and we don't know what to do. And I think parents who are whatever parenting style they're trying, it's not working. You got to listen to the people who are with your kids all day because there's a crisis uh, I going disagree. on. I disagree. I disagree. I disagree. I think there is a lot of room for places like classrooms to evolve because we don't learn and we know kids don't all learn the same way. Yeah. And that is an evolution of listening to kids. Well, you're disagreeing with kids. all the parents, all the, sorry, all the coaches and teachers who are like, listen, TikTok is full of these videos, by the way. I, I suggest you guys. Okay, TikTok's not real life. No, so no, I, no, I, I'm no, a parent. No, wait, TikTok is real life. You can't say that anymore. TikTok is real life. When people are posting videos and there's a bunch of teachers who are like, this is what's happening in the classroom. Parents, help us. I used to be a teacher mm. and I will say this, the old way of doing things where it was like you would just look at a kid and it was like the fear of God. Yeah. I don't, I never wanted a yeah. classroom like that. Even though, yes, you can definitely show numbers that kids were behaving themselves. Does that mean they were learning? Does that mean they actually respected you? Or did they just fear you? Hey, and there's, those kids, are they learning? changes. Of course they're learning. I'm, of hearing, course they're learning. I'm hearing numbers that are listen, very different I, to listen, that. Listen, the education system leaves a lot to be desired. Absolutely. I, I agree say, with I'm you. Like, mm. but, but teachers are trying to do better mm -hmm. to understand that, no, kids are not just little robots. They do have feelings. They 
they do have thoughts of their own, and they're really imaginative if you give them the space to actually be creative. I know, but do so we have to cater to every there? feeling that they have? Like, it's fine that they have feelings, but do we need yeah. to cater to every single feeling? I feel like we're doing too no, much catering. No, teachers can do and that. Not. No, teachers, I mean, they can't. There's they can't. 28, 30 exactly. kids in a class. I don't know. I think it's really easy to look at kids today on TikTok and everything and say, oh, they're, they're running wild. They don't have any discipline. And I think maybe they don't have the same rigid discipline that we did growing up. Mm. But in terms of my friends' kids and everything, maybe they're a little kind of more all over the place, but I find them really interesting. I think they're yeah. more in touch with their feelings. Yeah. I think they tend to be more creative than us. And I think in a lot of ways, they're actually emotionally smarter than we were in the mm -hmm. way we were raised. That being said, if I had kids, I would start out trying to be totally strict and that would last a week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Do whatever you want, I just don't want to Yeah, I love these creative kids. Yeah. Are they, when are they looking up from their, from their gadgets and their phones and stuff to have? Oh, <laughs> Hey there, what did you think? Drop your comments below and join the conversation. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you can find more on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. See you soon.